Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to talk about what's the best intensity for full body red light therapy panels. Now, if you're watching this video, that means you know there's a difference between having the best intensity versus the highest intensity. If you believe the highest intensity is the best intensity, then you would have already bought a panel that claims to have some massively high number. But like most medicine, red light therapy tries to find the minimum effective dose, the MED which unfortunately it seems like a lot of people are looking for the maximum effective dose. And we know that too much red light therapy can lead to the biphasic dose response. That means there's an inhibitory reaction and we usually don't get the biological response that we want. There's been entire studies about this. Let's read a quote. A biphasic dose response has been frequently observed where low levels of light have much better effect on stimulating and repairing tissues than higher levels of light. The so-called Arnold Schultz curve is frequently used to describe this biphasic dose response. So lower doses have often been found to have better responses. And notice how that's kind of the opposite of what most marketing experts will tell you. So let's look at another quote from that same study. The natural assumption that is frequently made is that if a small dose of red or near-infrared light produces a significant therapeutic effect, then a larger dose should produce an even more beneficial effect. This natural assumption is frequently not the case. So I really like that the study is specifically addressing our natural human biases to assume that more is better or bigger is better when that's clearly not the case in the studies and they're discouraging us from it. So they're really calling us out on our own biases when really we should be thinking in more of a less is more mentality. So let's look at a quote of a 2017 handbook of phototherapy. It is argued by sales and marketing people that more power means the required dose is achieved in less time. And mathematically, that is true. However, it has been shown many times that there is a dose rate effect. If the dose is delivered too quickly, the beneficial effects are diminished. This is because the intensity, the radiance or power density, is too high. So again, another textbook, another documented case where they're calling out our biases and the salespeople and marketing people are trying to play into our natural biases and tell us what we wanna hear, that they've got the highest power thing and that's the best. And that's naturally what we assume the case, but these studies and these textbooks are calling us out. Now, when we wanna establish the intensity range, we first wanna know what's the limitation, what's too high, especially most of the time it's regarded as causing too much heat on the skin or on the body or a danger to the eyes. So one study on irradiation limits tells us multiple times that intensities that are too high will cause skin hyperthermia, skin overheating. They specifically note that 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared or higher will cause that effect. And it seems the conclusion from this study is that lower irradiance, less than 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared, is less likely to induce skin hyperthermia, leading to potential deleterious effects, which deleterious is a fancy way of saying negative effects. So we know the limitations about 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. If you really want to push it, maybe 100, but usually we want to stay below 50. So what's the ideal intensity range? Well, according to studies by Daniel Barillette, he often says that the intensity range should mimic the intensity that we're naturally exposed to from sunlight. In fact, he says that therapeutic sweet spot should be in that range of what we naturally should expect from sunlight in the red to near infrared range. And according to one of his studies, that's between 30 to 35 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And again, depending on how you calculate the sunlight intensity and the wavelength ranges, sometimes that could be as low as 25, sometimes it could be up to 50. So usually we want to be in that range of what the sunlight delivers to us. And it's very clear that if you're trying to do intensities that are much higher than what sunlight would deliver, then our skin's not built to handle that on a thermal level. And that's why we get overheating and we get deleterious effects. So let's look at some actual full body red light therapy studies and see what they say. I've compiled a list on one of my blogs of all eight full body red light therapy studies. Which that number should shock you because a lot of companies say they have thousands of studies, but there's only eight studies that actually use full body red light therapy. So we should really be taking a look at those specific studies so we know what intensity did they use and how to use it properly. 
And I found from that investigation, intensities as low as 13 milliwatts per centimeter squared were used up to about 49 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So it's an interesting pattern that maybe they got the memo not to do more than 50. They're all below 50. And three of the studies use the famous Novothor light therapy pod. Now this pod uses 660 and 850 nanometer wavelengths and it's reported in the studies that they use 28 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Now let's finish with a short clip of Dr. Hamblin telling us what the ideal intensity is for full body red light therapy. This was an interview he had with Ari Witten on the Energy Blueprint YouTube channel so you can go check out that full video. And also it depends what area you're irradiating. If you're irradiating a big area, like the whole body, right? You know, 10 or 20 milliwatts per square centimeter is high. So notice how Dr. Hamlin says that covering the whole body with 10 to 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared is high. He didn't say it was the bare minimum. He didn't say it was a little bit. He said it was high. And he goes on to say that it's a lot because you're covering a large area of the body with a lot of intensity, so your total joules absorbed will be very high. So there we have it, the adequate and appropriate range for full body red light therapy intensity is probably somewhere between 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared up to about 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And remember being on the upper end of the range does not mean it's better or faster. Sometimes you want those lower levels like 10, 20, or even the 30s like we've seen in studies and like what the experts are telling us. When companies say they have the highest intensity, they're twice the intensity of their competitors, they're so much higher intensity than everyone else, that means those panels have not been studied for safety and effectiveness. Where we know the actual full body studies have never gone beyond 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And it's important to identify our biases and recognize them that naturally we assume that if a little bit of something is good, then more of something is even better. But that's not the case, especially in science and medicine, that we have to be disciplined and follow the science and follow the evidence and not do too much just because of a marketing gimmick. So anyway, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that helps you find the right intensity to use our large full body red light therapy panels. Use them effectively, use them safely, use them consistently with the science. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.